Hey, welcome to Between the Lanes, episode number 54. I'm Ron. I'm Shane. And we've got um, a lot of race results from last weekend. Um, of course, the Nazarene Nats is taking place this week and as we tape this show. So we got some early results from that. Um, we got some good news, bad news. We got a couple of giveaways. And anything else you want to add before we start? Mr. Parent? I think of right off the top of my head now. Okay. Well, let's, let's just... I haven't been doing much racing, so I haven't really been in the loop of things. Okay. So, of course, as we start off the show every week, um, check out our channel on YouTube, Slot Car Racer. Or no, excuse me, Slot Racer. And um, you can see all the videos. Like I said, we're up. this is episode 54. There's 53 other episodes. There's somehow two... Um, videos on there and there's also some special interview type uh, episodes as well so lots to see there of course uh, find the between the lanes page on facebook uh, like the page um, if you make comments there or any between the lane facebook page we add you to the winning bucket that we pull names out of to give away prizes on the show so Without further ado, the race results for last weekend, the winning report. Uh, we're going to start off this week over in the UK where they had the 2018 UK RA Retro Championship races at Highlands. And this is the track that they um, ran on. Um, this track has been in England for a while. Um, it... Uh, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think they might have hosted an Israel. World's on this, and if they didn't, they've hosted several British slot racing national championships on this over the years. So later in the show, we'll show you what the new uh, UK track looks like for the 2019 Israel Worlds. Or 20, yeah, 2019. Yeah, I was going to say, you get it right. So in the saloon class... Uh, Murray Wallace was the winner. George Kimber was second, and Danny Kempson third. This was kind of a kind of the same motif through the weekend, except that they got changed up a little bit. Uh, F1 George Kimber winner, Danny Kempson second, Murray was third. Same in Can Am. George was your winner with Danny second and Murray third, and then in the Tottenham Sports Class. Uh, George pulled off the rare, I don't know what you call, it's not a hat trick. I guess he pulled off the quad. Yeah. By winning all four events. Uh, Danny Kempson was second uh, again for, you know, three second place sweeps. And then Richard Wallace was third. In Columbus, Ohio was the um, annual um, Jim Nolan Memorial Six Hour Endurance Race. This year it was with Coop Bodies. Um, never really got an accurate breakdown of the drivers on the teams, but I do know that Southern D uh, <laughs> featured Will Brinkley and uh, Jay Gard and Bobby Robinson. Uh, and the D stood for discomfort. Uh, they, were the, they were the winners. And then Jason Dennis's team was second. I don't know who was on Team Bugaloo, but they were third. And um, you can see the lap difference. Was, there was only six uh, six cars for this year's version. Um, the last few years, they've had um, eight teams for the race. Um, not saying that's good, not saying it's bad, but uh, they only had six teams this year versus – I think How the many fifth, on the team? Um, you have to be a minimum, I think, three-man team. At least that's the way it used to be. And um, people still, that's still a decent yeah. crowd. Well, I think the, um, I know the first year of the Enduro, I think there was only six teams. And I think the second year, there might have only been six teams. And it kind of went up to eight and was right. eight, several years. And I'm going to say this might have been the 10th edition of, of the uh, six hour Enduro. No, probably the ninth. But I'm. It's close either way. So that was right. at Thumb Thumb Hobbies in Columbus, Ohio. 
Uh, the Mid America Hard Body Slot Car Club. Uh, we were at Thaser Raceway in uh, lovely South Bend, Indiana, at Dave Gehring's Thaser Raceway, racing on the White Knight course. Um, there's the clan out front. Um, hard body, hobby stock, two hour enduro, 15 minutes each lane, uh, three drivers minimum per team. Six teams had three drivers, two teams had four. So you know, we had a total of 26 drivers. And uh, there was the 18 cars. So after two hours, uh, the, the winning team was uh, Dave Garino, J.P. Milcherska, and Rick Chase. Second place team was John Miller, Zach Woods, and Rick Stegen. And they beat out the third place team by just one lap after two hours. Um, third place team was uh, Dave Solomon, Dennis Clark, Jimmy, and Fred Fowler. And early in the race, you know, we were on 15-minute heats and everything, and um, which, like, they're not short heats, but they're not long heats. And um, in, in this team and JP's team, I mean, they ran, they ran on the same lap, like, the first, the first three heats. So, like, for 45 minutes, they were never any worse than a lap apart. And then things kind of started to happen as the race went on. So, right. Penn Jersey NASCAR series kicked off last weekend at Dom's Raceway in New Jersey. And um, I don't have any photos um, of uh, the podiums, but in the Xfinity class, Matt Bruce was first place, Carmen was second, Jimmy Rossetti was second or third, excuse me. And in the Cup class, Matt Bruce pulled off another win for. Uh, the sweep of the day, John Streisguth was second, and Joe M. was third. And I believe Carmen won the B main and was second overall in Xfinity, and I believe Joe M. won the B main in Cup Class and wound up third overall. So that was pretty cool. The Tri-State Summer Series was at Mark's Model World, Canton, Ohio, um, and, and no photos of the podiums. Can-Am Bud Bartos was the winner, Greg Fox second, Greg Mayer was third, GT1 it was Greg Mayer the winner, Bud Bartos second, Ralph Middall third, and then GTP it was Mr. Mayer winning again with Tim Burton second and Bud Bartos in third. And then there was some fun racing in the Chicagoland area and they were at Mid-America Raceway and in the uh, coupe class, John Austin was the winner, Ricky D was second, and Cato was third. In the stock car class, Ricky D was the winner, John Austin second, Dale Light third. And in GT12, Ricky D won again with John Austin second again, and uh, Phil Cruder was in third. And then at the Nazra Nets, which started uh, yesterday on Tuesday, today's Wednesday, yeah. um, Group F kicked off the start of this event, and the uh, winner in Group F was Jeff Green with John Wilbur from California second and Eric Shiree third. Interesting note, Jeff Green is a former NASCAR Bush Series champion. So that is the, you know, like NASCAR. Yeah. He's currently running, I think he's still running kind of start and park. And he is. Uh, yep. So, but, uh, you know, Tuesday's not race day for them guys. So he was there and right. kind of his local raceway. And um, he's won at least one or two Group F races in the past. Yeah, I was going to say, he's been very competitive with the Group F. So congrats to Jeff Green on his NASRA win. And then in one motor box, I don't have a podium pitcher, but the winner uh, and pitcher there in the blue shirt holding a little trophy in his car is Jeff Cox from Florida. And he's pitcher with Jim Hahn from Oklahoma, who was not in the race, but um, I don't know if he presented the trophy or what. But uh, Jeff Cox was your winner in one motor box. Larry Pellegrini from New York was second. And Paul Peterson, uh, Kind of a local racer, but originally from Arizona, was third. So, and they are, and we'll have more updates and all the details 
uh, from the rest of the races this week on next week's show. And down in Australia, they had their Australia, they had their 2018 retro Nats. Um, Cody Bramble here was the winner in both F1 and Can Am. Jason Brooks, he's an excitable looking guy, isn't he? Yeah, it sounds like, yeah. <laughs> Jason was uh, second in Can Am and third in F1. And then uh, Mac Fox was third in Can Am and second in F1. So, as far as I know, oh, there's one more. So, Cap Henry did manage to win last weekend again. <laughs> You're hacking them up. <laughs> I made a four in a row. And, uh, you know, I really don't know if he's racing this weekend or not, but whenever he's racing, this weekend, next weekend, or maybe he's racing right. tomorrow night, or, uh, he, he'll be going for five in a row. I don't know if maybe between the lanes is maybe bringing him a little luck here on this streak. Yeah. But, uh, How much was this win? I think 3000 3000 That's still a good chunk of change. Yeah, I think it was, it was either two or three, but I want to say this one was three. So... Yeah, he's won probably close to a little over thirty thousand dollars in the last four weeks. I think maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, complain about there. I don't know how much that he gets, but you know. Right. I mean, still. Yeah. Him and his team team's efforts have won a little over thirty thousand dollars in the last four weeks. Right. So congratulations to Cap and good luck this weekend. And that's your winner winner chicken dinner reports. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Right on cue, almost. Yeah, I was going to say, it takes a minute for it to pop up for me to oh, see no, okay. it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, like, so you're, you're pausing, I'm looking like, is it my turn? <laughs> it's a long day. <laughs> okay, so uh, this weekend, of course, the Nazra Nets um, is happening through Sunday. Um, right now they're they're running the uh, Cobalt 12 main as we uh, – uh, tape this. Uh, tomorrow will be Hillbilly Box. Friday will be 27 Light. Two Motor Open on Saturday and Group 7 on Sunday. So also this weekend is the uh, SCRA at Buena Park. Um, uh, so there's the Nazra Nats. This weekend there's the track. Mm -hmm. Oh, also this weekend is the um, – 2018, and they're calling it the Internats. Um, 124 scale Internats. It's in the UK. This is the 2019 ISRA track. Um, they raced on it last weekend. They had a clubs, club, clubman's race on it. 130 second scale cars. I was having a tough time figuring out uh, who won what because – just kind of weird how the race results were posted. So maybe I'll more on that next weekend along with some internets um, results. But, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, all the 124th scale classes right. will be raced this weekend. So good luck to everyone in the UK. Uh, this weekend's the Concord Hard Body Classic, which I believe Shane is entered in. I am. I leave. Depends on how work goes. I'll either be there Friday night. Or Saturday morning. Okay. And that's at the slot car track. Concord, home of? 2019 Division Two Nats. With free Wi-Fi, free hot dogs, you bring the bun. So free hot dogs all week? Free hot dogs all week. You just got to bring your own buns. Really? Yeah, that's kind of an ongoing joke. So, but are you serious? <laughs> no, I don't know. You oh. might do it. <laughs> Got like free soup, bring your own bowl. You get me all hyped up. I'm thinking, well, I was like, the price of hot dog buns more than the price of hot dogs down there in South Carolina or what? That's North Carolina. Oh, North Carolina. Yes, North Carolina. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he'll do something. Okay. Also, this week. Oh, go ahead. Nah, I was going to say, me and Bobby talked about bringing the grill up there, but that's still a ways away. I've heard rumor they call them possum tail sandwiches. Is that true? Yeah. You already told me about that story. I'm not going there. That's another joke. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> might hurt some feelings, cause some butt hurt, so I'll shut up. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. you know me. It don't matter to me. It's, yeah, I know. If it's good and it's free, whatever. <laughs> so this weekend is the AWRA Stock Car Racing 
uh, Thunder, at Thunder Road Raceway, Stock Cars Legends and Sportsmen, Saluda, Virginia. I think I say that right. Yeah. Uh, the Gorski uh, Classic uh, Memorial Race is at Fast Tracks in Bechtelville, PA. That's also a Retro East race that kicks off their series. And then on September 9th, we've got the uh, Legends Race at Chicagoland Raceway. Also on September 9th, it kicks off the Mid-South Slot Car Racing Association Series. Where's their first race at? That's at Archdale, there North Carolina. I was I'll be you, attending that also. I was giving you a little test there, so. Yep, that'll, it's been a while since I've been there, and they've just freshly rebraided and rerouted. And yeah, looks tracks good. all cleaned up. And, yep, he's, he's doing some work to it again. He kind of does it in phases, so I'm. I wasn't going to go just because of other races coming up, but then I kind of worked it into schedule and I seen they were doing the work to the track and I was like, yeah, I want to go get some of that. Cool. September 15th. Yeah. September 15th. OCC is at fast tracks kicking off their, uh, 2018, 19 series. The Midwest flat track series will be having uh, sunset enduro at Chicagoland raceway. Uh, the Penn Ohio Retro Series uh, get, gets kicked off uh, also on September 15th at Mark's Model World. Also on September 15th, well, actually 14th and 15th at Fast Eddie's Slot Cars. And where is that at? Pinellas Pinellas Park, Park, Florida. Florida. Uh, they will be having their first annual Southern Retro Rumble Race. September, 20, uh, September 22nd. Flexi Fiesta Mid America Raceway, Naperville. Free tacos. Free tacos, yeah. I don't think you have to bring your. Uh, yeah, it'd be kind of hard to get those on the plane. I can bring many bottles of tequila, though. There you go. <laughs> so, September 29th is the Retro Summit, and that kicks off the BRS Retro Series at Mark's Model World September 29th. Mark's got some races lined up for him. Yes, he does. So I have good news and bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? Uh, let's start with the bad to end on a good note. That's perfect because, oh, hold on. So as everyone, well, I shouldn't say everyone knows because maybe some people don't know this yet, but um, Frank Sarkala, the owner of Slot Car Raceway in Rohnert Park, California, has decided to retire, and he's put the tracks up for sale. And, um, you know, Frank's been a track owner for like 25 years. Yeah, I read a um, thing that he was posting about. Yeah, it's kind of more it's kind of more sad news than it is bad news. But, um, you know, the bad news is that, you know, kind of like Frank is closing. Right. I think Frank's going to keep racing. Um, but, you know, it's just, you know, it was another fun place to go. I mean, I, I went out there one time back in, I think, 2001, 2002 right. uh, for a USCA Nats, um, and they did not have the Tesserosa then. Um, they had the King Track, and I don't remember what exactly they had for a flat track then. It's been so long ago, but uh, so anyway. But the good news is, the Tesserosa track that we are looking at has been sold, purchased by Richard Kernut, um, who, uh, nice. yep, who's moving it down to, um, I guess Orange County, California, LA area. Um, uh, what I've read posted is he's going to order a new girding King track and there's also going to be a third track because the post said there would be three tracks. So I don't know if the third track is going to be a drag strip or it's going to be something else, but right. The good news is Frank's track, the Testarossa will live on still in California, just about six or seven hours down the road. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask is what's the <clears throat> yeah. mileage or hour. Well, you know what? It could be closer to seven, eight, because I, I, I kind of forget that Frank is like about an hour north of San Francisco. So, right. San Francisco to LA, six hours, but it depends off its south side to north side, or if it's north to south, it, you know. So, seven, eight drive, seven, eight hour drive, I guess we'll we'll call it at that, because I don't know exactly where. Yeah, I just fly to the nearest no airport and go from there. Yes. <laughs> So, and also in good news is uh, the Texas Retro Series 
Uh, we'll be having a Can-Am race this weekend at uh, Dallas Slot Cars. Uh, Dallas Slot Cars, uh, they've been having some drag racing going on there. They're kind yeah, of, I've been seeing them posting about the drag racing. It looks like they're... They were down for like five months. Now they're they're up and rolling again. Uh, they got the flat track uh, pretty well tuned in, I guess. Um, but they just want to race Can-Am just to see if there's any bugs in the track or work them out. Right. So get straight down. this will kind of be Dallas Slot Cars' first uh, road race in five months. So that's great news, and uh, Texas Retro is back up and going again. So, and we're going to get into the way back time machine. We're going to go back to 1993, 25 years ago. We talked about this 1993 a couple weeks ago on the show. Um, but in 1993, Slot Car Bulletin issue number two came out. Well, I guess it kind of came out in September, but after the race. But it was about, like I said, 25 years ago. Maybe another week it'll be exactly 25 years, but we're close enough. So. Uh, the USRA National Championships was held that year in Reseda, California at um, Checker Flag Raceway. Uh, at that time, Checker Flag had like four tracks in the building. I believe they removed one to make room for pits and stuff. Uh, they were all brand new Ogilvy tracks. Um, first time uh, a slot car racers have been treated to what we called the Punch Bowl King Track. And um, that was kind of a uh, historical Nats on a few different levels. Um, of course, we were still running scale cars and wing cars at the same Nats. Uh, there was uh, 470 entries uh, that week between the two classes. Um, but there was 300 total wing car uh, entries uh, alone, uh, counting the two warm-up races. We well, you know counting warm-up races, 362 entries in the wing classes. And uh, without those, then there was 300 in the national championship classes. Um, another interesting historical point was uh, not only was that P.A. Watson's fourth, and he was the first four-time USRA Group 7 national champion, um, uh, the world record was set that weekend of, I think, 185, or 184, or something like that. And um, I kind of got the little news article here. I should probably pull it over here. But I think the biggest historical thing of that week was that that was the first time we had a, a female USRA national champion, and that was uh, Sherry Pedersen, uh, Buford's wife. Um, she won the 27 class and um, let's see here I want to I want to get you that world record for group seven cars and that world record was a one eight five zero so I was kind of close so um, also in that issue before we go more into the USR stuff um, there wasn't really much in this issue other than the USRA Nats and a few other things. So the Florida USRA had had a race at Checkered Flag Raceway, Rockledge, Florida, which I believe Bill Pinch owned this raceway, but I'm not 100% sure. Because um, I know one time Bill Pinch was in Rockledge, but this might have been after the time he owned the raceway. Um, so in Stock Flexi, Rick Smolka was the winner, Outlaw 12, Robert Blanton. Uh, Manny, Manny Godwin was the winner in box stock. Adam Crawley won international in group 27. And uh, Aaron Kincaid won group seven. And Don Madison was second in group seven. And we just had him on the show a couple weeks ago for one of the Florida series races. Um, it was on a 140-foot Hasi paper clip back in the days where we ran group seven cars on all types of tracks. But this was kind of the time it was getting to the point where Everybody wanted to race on Kings, and then after they went to the Nats, they were all wanted to run on punch bowls. So, um, also on this issue, because we brought this up, and I didn't, I wasn't aware of this article. I would have brought this up on the show weeks ago. Um, 
this is the article about the TOA, the Track Owners Association, and their first meeting, which was held down in Enid, Oklahoma. And um, so that, that was in there. So that happened, I think, like I said, it was like June of 93, uh, June or July of 93. So, of course, uh, we already talked about PA made it four in a row. Or not four in a row. He made it four uh, right. seven national championships. Um, uh, 471 entries, records fall, records fell all week, of course, because because of the punchable track. So, right. Uh, and then the two warm up races that week uh, in the Group 27, uh, Sherry Pedersen was the winner, uh, barely beating out Paul Chicarillo by a lap. Um, and there was uh, 29 entries in the Group 27 warm up race. In the Group 7 warm up race, there was 33 total entries. Uh, Buford was the winner of the warm up race, six laps over PA Watson. And Edward Bartowski was from Austria. He was uh, 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 Martin Graham's sidekick at the time, and he was third. So in the box stock class, there was 50 entries. In the international 15 class, there was 52 entries. Um, group 27, there was 88 entries. <laughs> and uh, It's an all-nighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Semi-pro, there was 46 entries. And in the pro class, there was, that's kind of half, I couldn't get them all in there, but uh, there was 64 entries in the group seven pro class. Another big one. Uh, Michael Hakenson was the uh, box stock national champion. Uh, Mickey Johnson was international 15 champion. Uh, Edward was uh, the semi-pro champion that year. And, uh, well, I'm going to go back. And I don't have photos of, like, the podium. Well, yeah, I kind of did, but I didn't tell Well, I took, had it up there earlier. But PA won. Right. With, uh, Martin Graham was second, and Craig Landry was third. Craig Landry was the world record uh, holder of 185. He barely beat out Martin at, like, 187 or something. Um, so that is the, uh, so that's the, that's the lap record, 1,187 laps. Well, was that back there? Let's see. Da -da -da -da. Well, 868 was the winning numbers or lap total. And I think that was a world record at that time for group seven cars. I, I think all the, I think they set world records in all the mains that week. Gotcha. Um, I would have to read a little deeper, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Cause I said it was it's the first time any of us, I mean, now, you know, some of the Southern California guys had run on that track previous, right? but I mean, it was the first time a lot of people had run on the track and, and a punch bowl track. So, I mean, I think the biggest, I can't remember guys, you know, it was kind of, you know, like prior to that, I guess maybe depending on power and glue and but maybe on some of the Hossi tracks built prior to that, you might have been able to punch the finger. Right. Red and white, maybe orange when you qualify and kind of iffy. You could definitely punch the finger here if your car was right, the glue was right. I mean, and for most guys, that was right. And in this, I can remember – I can remember the 90 just being so ungodly fast compared <laughs> to any other 90. Right. Um, and, and the dead man, you know, like, I don't remember. I mean, just finger, I don't know. I mean, the finger was the finger, but the dead man and the 90 on the track was just like nothing I had ever seen or yeah. run on before. And I don't remember much about the top turn, but um, I'm sure it was probably jacked a little bit. Yeah. And somewhere I, I, have, I have photos of the track, um, but I didn't take the time to dig them out. So maybe in a future show when we start talking, it, um, talking like hit, the evolution of king tracks, maybe. Right. I can pull some of those pictures out. Because, yeah. like, from the late yeah, end. Because that's what they're running now. And what, Cobalt 12, I've seen some of the qualifying results as far as lap time. Yeah, I think I think just earlier they they ran. I seen someone ran a one ninety six in the race, 
Yeah, I think TQ was a 172. Right. So I think it was Tony Griffin. Yeah. TQ and Cobalt 12. Right. So, you know, here we are 25 years later. Yeah. The Cobalt 12 cards are faster than the open cards. I mean, but that's, that. I mean, that's yeah. what it is. So, I mean, okay, so let's go back here because this was something. Okay, so box stocks went 390 laps. Right. Um, and you can't compare it, but, I mean, for example, Group F cards went 504. Right. So, so to put that in perspective, you know, we raced the FNRS race at Tracy's mm -hmm. a year ago. A, th a three-minute main for GTP, we ran two-minute heats. If we ran three-minute heats, mm -hmm. I would have ran like 436 laps. So my GTP car was 50, 45 laps faster than a box stock car 25 years <laughs> <you know>? Right. <laughs> so... I was like, I tell people all the time when they ask about Tracy's track comparison, I was like, you can't really, you know, compare it with any other track. Right. It's like, it's just that much faster, you know? Right. So we got some giveaways or yeah, giveaways. We're going to give away three packages of the new mid America products. I guess we'll call it the motor screw. Um, these screws are kind of different and unique in the fact uh, they are a metric two millimeter screw. They are four millimeters long, as the thread is. Um, and um, they'll screw into any FK motor as well as the ProSlot FKs, the ProSlot 16Ds. Um, and they use the 050 Allen wrench the same as your gears and your tires on your slot cars. So not that I screw my motors in in retro cars, but right. if I borrowed a car or maybe someone's like, can you change my motors? And they got their motors screwed in. You have to have a, you have to have a different Allen wrench for them, for what most guys out there use, which is usually an 050 X head, but there's also a bastard size <laughs> a little smaller than that. Right. So, you know, it's like you almost got to have both wrenches because right. you don't know what you might encounter. And now we have this size. So now we have three sizes. But I'm thinking like, hmm, I can eliminate two of my wrenches in my box. Right. If I screwed my motors in. and Yeah, or in your big caddy. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you can use these on, like I said, I mean, you know, retros, retros really where they do a lot of screwed in motors as well as drag right. racing with the Neo classes. So, um, you know, here's a new screw. Uh, I think there's 24 in a pack. I think they're like eight bucks retail or seven, seven something retail. You can go on the Mid America Facebook page or slotcar net website i think yeah i think yeah i think that's what it is you get more details on the pricing and stuff but um yeah it's not like this this big huge product announcement or something but i mean it is right. it, it, it can make a lot of people's lives easier you know so right there you go so we'll be giving away some of those in the show and that's all i have um so before we go to the giveaways is there anything that we talked about or mentioned that you want to talk about? Mm, not really. Not that I can not think of. Really. Okay. No, like I said, I haven't really been racing. I'm getting ready to get fired up more so with racing. My racing is starting to pick up. Yeah, they start so, getting busy next month for a lot of people. Yeah. So here lately, it's just kind of been hanging out and prepping and Hotel arrangements, flight arrangements. And the series start off. And um, um, so, yeah, Pete um, posted a list for the Pro Flexi yeah. Challenge a couple of days ago, I guess Monday. And 17, 18 guys, and I think a few more have joined in. Yeah. I know I there's more guys talking about it. They haven't done it right. yet. Because I think what I mean you came up with another ten or fifteen names 
that wasn't guys, on the list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's easily probably 30 guys. I mean, some of them are kind of like, eh, you know, they're, 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 they've raced it before, but will they race it now? Right. And whatnot. I mean, I've had guys call me from Connecticut and Maine wanting to come down. Right. So I was like, all right. So be interested to see whenever it's all said and done and there's a final list to see who shows. Right. Well, and I'm sure that's coming pretty soon. Um, because I think you got, what is it, two weeks before the due date to pay your fees? Yeah, I, you know what? I don't know if I've seen anything on yeah. that. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to find uh, – I'm not having any luck here. It's somewhere here. What are you trying to look up? Oh, I'm trying to find the – should be coming up here. Next Pete has it on this homepage, I think. Yeah, well, I've got it here. I just – but I didn't – I, you know, kind of wasn't thinking about that when I did the other prep. <laughs> and um, so it, it's kind of one of those deals where now i got to go find it. But it should be right here. At least I thought. <laughs> probably way further than where I thought. Okay, so you're going to go this weekend and race, and then you go to Mid-South, and then you're coming up for the um, Flexi Fiesta. Yes, uh, huh? Yep. Yeah. And after the Fiesta, that's what, September, October, I'll be at Middleton. For the FNRS race, yeah, and then I think it's what the week after I'll be at the money race. And after the money race, we go into November. <laughs> right. That'll be another Mid South race, and then it'll be the Flexi Flats, and then December we'll have to see. So there's what we were talking about. There, yeah. Two thousand dollar cash payout, October nineteenth and twentieth. Hobby Max, guaranteed. Yep. At and I think everyone's asked. Let's see what all of I seen people ask. It's guaranteed. So if there's ten or fifty people, payouts guaranteed. Yeah, because Pete has sponsors who's put the money. Right. In. Yes. Uh, I all think the sponsors are like local businesses. Well, Pete used to, or he may still, Pete, he's a retired firefighter. He drag race, so he's always kind of been involved with racing. Okay. And I want to say he, I believe it's his brother or maybe him also has kind of connections with a machine shop that I think his brother owns. Okay. So he's always kind of been involved, and I mean, all the races he's ever held, he's always been real good at getting sponsors to donate stuff and put forth money. Okay. And whatnot. I mean, every money race that I'm aware of him having, I've been to, and I've there's never been an issue with, you know, it's always yeah. kind of been straightforward. Yeah, know. this was in his first rodeo. Right. You know. Not so. his first rodeo. Hotels are closed. It's in a mall. Plenty of places to eat. Plenty of places to park. All that good stuff. I mean, if you go to IHOP, you might want to bring your own china or glass yeah. or silverware to drink with, eat with. They give you a sippy cup to go, though. <clears throat> they give you a sippy cup to stay in. Yeah. Oh, the stories. Oh, the stories we could tell. I still think the, the, the best one still still uh, Middleton when we went to Frickers. Frickers. Yeah. yeah. I had the Uber driver pick boss. us up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, was the, fun <laughs> I think the funniest part of that was we were standing outside waiting for everybody to get there. Right. And the guy and his mom got out of a different Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. And I pulled the door <laughs> open for him. And I don't remember if he said something to me or I said something to him, but, man, he was, like, wasted. Yeah, he felt like I felt getting there whenever I was leaving. 
<laughs> what you might have thought was his girlfriend actually turned out to be his mom, and she, yeah, she actually was driving him bar to bar wherever he wanted to go. Right. Well, he got wasted, and she was the designated driver. And it was, again, I forgot what, I, I just forget what was. Oh, no, I remember what happened. I think he went to go grab the door, and he, like, missed it. And you were oh. like, hey, you want me to help you with that there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Need some help with his, that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then his mom was like, he's been drinking. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's how, Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, man. she was contributing to his delinquency. Hey, I mean, he was smart, though. I mean, he had someone well, driving yeah. him around. So, I mean, hey. Hey, mom yeah. got out. You know, it's like. Yeah. They, she could just stay <laughs> home. He could have stayed home and he could have got drunk there, but she wouldn't have got Probably to been go. a lot cheaper, but. She wouldn't have got to go people watch or whatever, so. Watch her son have a good time and possibly make a fool of himself. It was pretty, yeah, it was pretty, yeah. He was making a fool of himself just getting in the door. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's not supposed to make it look so obvious at first, you know. Yeah. You know, that was a fun night, though. The only thing else about Durham is just don't go with Ralph to buy lottery tickets. Right. <laughs> he didn't get any win. I don't Has Ralph, has he ever got any winning tickets? Or he was it Durham where he won like three bucks and didn't cash them in? So, yeah, I think he won three and turned them in and lost. Just replayed them? Yeah. Gotcha. And he lost, what, five bucks to you? Oh, up there at Durham at Ski Ball and everything. Ski Ball and Cold ah, I think when it was all said and done, but yeah, because we were all placing wagers or bets or however you want to say it on your qualifying time. Right. I won that and then Ski Ball. I think I made like 20 bucks because okay. we were just doing dollar bets, just something. All at Ralph's expense. Yeah. I was like, I've told you and I've told everyone else that was probably one of the funnest races at Durham, I think I've ever had. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a good time. You know, everyone just seemed like, it was like we were all in rare form, there to have fun, laughing and cutting up. You know, it's a lot, a lot of fun. And I think we went to dinner after. That wasn't when we went to IHOP, was it? The first Durham was IHOP. And the second one, we went to the steakhouse. Roadhouse, yeah. Yeah, because that's when you almost rear-ended me and Bobby. Huh? Hey, you don't remember you were following us, and there was like – Oh, the, yeah. The, yeah, and you were like, you yeah. us like, what are you doing? I was like, yeah, we threw the hand up saying we were checking up, and they were backing them up. It locked up the brakes on me. Yeah. I, mean, I, was, I, was, I was saying it was just like, what the hell is he doing? Yeah, now nah, we were stopping because – Whoever was in front of us was just like, ah, we're stopping here. You weren't stopping. You were emergency stopping. Yeah. Had all our stuff behind us. And I was like, oh, Ron, don't worry. And just, I remember Bobby looked up and he's like, hey, pretty close. Pretty close. I was like, I yeah. Think I wasn't this. looking some. I mean. Oh, yeah. That would have sucked. I, I mean, I guess if you're going to rear in someone, I guess it's a, it's kind of. <laughs> at least it's people you know and it's your friends. Or you can just be like, hey. Well, yeah. you got a car. You got a car. It's like, yeah, we do this on the track all the time. I mean, running. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, it's like, you know, um, you know, I, I've heard people say, or maybe I've even, but you know, it's like, okay, so you're you're a NASCAR driver, and you've just you get off the track after running, you know, uh, 200 laps at Talladega, running 200 plus mile an hour for a couple yep. hours, and. <laughs> get into your street car and you get on a highway. I mean, how do you drive? <laughs> nah, I can tell you. I can remember helping Cody and I wasn't even racing then. You know, I was just working the pits. I'd get on the, I don't know if it's just from the adrenaline of being there all day or what, get on the interstate, you know, speed limit 70 miles an hour. And I'm looking down doing 90, 95. It's just like, okay. So, yeah. Like okay. So, so when you're going, so when you're going to a slot car race, right. Do you drive faster to get there or faster to get home? Or does it make no difference? Uh, fast to get there and generally on the way home, to be honest with you, this is the God honest truth. I probably go five under, if not 10 under on the way home. Cause I'm usually so tired, okay. you know, that it's just, it, 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 it's just Sunday. I get over in the slow lane. I set the cruise control to 62 and I always tell myself I'll get there when I get there, you know? 
I'm normally in no hurry because generally I get home, I unload, and I take a nap. I'm then, pretty much the same speed there, same speed back. All right, wide open. Well, not wide open, but right. You know, yeah. usually, usually no more than ten over. Um, but there are there are there are occasions. But yeah, you got to you got to drive through penalty, didn't you? Going to Durham. Well, yeah, yeah, I did get a stop and go going to going yeah. there. Yeah. But that wasn't I wasn't that much over. It's just uh, Virginia's right. pretty strict. Oh yeah, I can I can remember going to the the this what was it called the speed? Let me look here. The Buckeye Steel Speed Fest. Must. Yeah. We were ticketed in Virginia coming out of a tunnel. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, you got to be careful with the tunnels there. Coming out of a tunnel, I think the speed limit was 60, and we were rolling 70. Yeah. They, Matt they, was driving, and I was like, what are you doing? He's like, we're getting a ticket. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I'm not even going to go. I'm not even going to fight it. Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, there's so there's <laughs> no uh, – Pull over I mean, to me. I mean, I got lucky. But, I mean, I know that usually they're like, oh, Ohio, if they pull you over, you're getting a ticket. Right. I mean, that's just uh, – and, and there's no uh, – there's just usually no way talking your way out of it. Right. But, I don't know. And like I said, he uh, – I don't know. He got me and I was super nice to him. And he was like, well, oh, yeah, it is. slow down, have a nice day. Right. Be a little slower up the road. The fog's up on the mountain. and Yeah. It was foggy. Yeah, now. fog. Woo-hoo. Yeah, you didn't want to go much more than 40 mile an hour up there. I can remember when we left to go to Mid-America for the Nats. We left Bobby's at like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. He drove the first stint and going through the mountains and everything, the rain. I think it rained on us until we got up in Indiana. I remember he was like, hey, look up the weather and see how big this I'm like, dude, it's raining the whole way. Like you said, the fog going through the mountains and the rain and everything else. I was well, going to try and go back to sleep, and I was just like, "Yeah, I'm, I can't sleep in this." Well, yeah, I mean, it was probably I was probably thirty miles north of the mountains. It was sunny. It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. As I got closer, it got more cloudy, got more foggy, got more misty, got more colder. Right. Yeah, I think the temperature dropped almost twenty degrees, and then come down off the mountain and. It went back to 20 degrees hotter. And the bad thing about the fog, too, is if it's real bad, you can't tell if you're going up or coming down. It's like one minute, it's all you can do to go up. Next minute, you're, you know, (laughs) putting on the old Jake break, trying to get her woed up. You know, because, like, that was my second trip to to Durham. And the first time, it was sunny. Both, you know, and this time it was nasty going but it was great coming back so right. you never know oh yeah um and i'd hate yeah, to just... i'd hate to go up through there and i know that just a couple of weeks before i had went through there mm-hmm. um you know winter storm and uh, the wind i mean the wind was so strong it actually blew semis over on their side right i mean there are signs up there you know warn warning signs about oh yeah but uh, but fortunately it's never been too windy uh, the times I've been up there. Like I said, every time we've ever traveled north to go to Marks or anything like that, it's always, it hasn't really been bad. Right. I mean, there was one time going up, I, I was driving. It wasn't bad. I was just tired. I think I drove up to like three in the morning and I was just like, yeah, that was. Well, the West Virginia Turnpike is fun at 10 over and it's real challenging when you get more than 10 over. Speed wise, oh yeah, you know that's me. It's like the older I get, getting there, it's got to go, got to go, got to go. Has to be the first one there just to look at a locked door, you know. I just want to get there. Like, yeah, I don't mind driving. I don't mind traveling. Right. I want to get there. I just want to like get that part of that over with. Oh yeah. The yeah. next thing. But that's just like everyone always asks me because we even did this big car racing. All right, gates don't open until noon. It takes us three hours to get there. You know, most people will be like, oh, well, you leave about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. It's like, no, we're going to leave at 6 in the morning. That'd be first in the morning when the gate opens. And they're like, why? And I'm like, you could have a flat on the trailer. You know, True. there could be an accident. 
you know, at some of the racetracks you go to, they would allow you to go ahead and get wristband in and signed in. Right. So when the gates open, you had first dibs where to park the hauler. And some of the know? best stories told were always waiting in line for the pit gate to open. I was always in the tire truck looking at tires. No. So, See, when I would go, we was just in line. Right. Tire truck. Yeah, it, See, the it, tire it, truck guy was smart. He would get there after it was yeah. open. So he right. could just drive, like, right in. Right. Well, see, so, like every race we went to, the tire truck was always outside. Unless there was big enough pits inside, then he'd be parked inside. Right. Yeah, we had yeah. Plenty, of, plenty of pits inside, so. Because like at Hickory, the tire truck always parked outside because the pits would be slammed full. So. The best one was our gas truck. Yeah. It was like a, uh, kind of like a box van. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, kind of like probably a medium-sized U-Haul truck gotcha you know um not a dually right oh well, yeah it was a dually but it looked like just a um like a u-haul yeah, look like a water truck they use for dirt tracks no no wasn't that it was, big it was a cube box gotcha with the roll up door in the back mm -hmm. and then inside there was a big 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 probably thousand gallon <laughs> gas tank gotcha and uh, this truck had no flammable paperwork, no flammable marking. <laughs> uh, you don't need it. This baby flew under the radar. It was back in the days where you were getting fuel for a race car and the guy smoking a cigarette. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how thousands, much you want? <laughs> Stop thousands and place. thousands and thousands of miles this truck would travel a year. I mean, they followed the ASA right. races and uh, right. you know, our local track. And, I mean, never had an accident, thank God. But, I mean. Yeah. Wow. I mean. They do it now. Yeah. I mean, but like I said, I mean, going down there, you just thought it was just this. Just to unmark you all? Yeah. I mean, it was painted all purple or, you know, like cam two purple color kind of. But, right. But, yeah, I mean, it, it had anywhere from zero to a thousand gallons of gas in the back of it. We went to a racetrack, trying to remember which one it was, but it was just. I just remember I had this blank look on my face, like, how does this even happen? They're having, you know, it's the past series with Cody raced. We showed up, and, uh, you know, how everyone just kind of hangs out before we sign in, and there was rumors. I hope everyone brought their own fuel because there wasn't gas. No fuel truck. Yeah, and we're like, huh? <laughs> you know? So it's kind of like, oh, this could get dicey. Yeah, we just always so, took our 55-gallon. I think that's what they do now barrel to the local Union 76 dealer and I think now you can actually just buy barrels of fuel yeah you, yeah back then you at all back then I don't think you could but right yeah we had our own barrel we just I don't know probably every month once a month probably throw it in the back of the truck right drive over to the old, the one and only Union 76 station that had the high octane gas and right yeah we have like Fill it there's up. no racing around here within miles and miles and miles. But there's like three or four stations. Well, they call it, they call it high performance fuel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, we got some. Like, I think at some Sunoco's here, you can actually buy Kim too. Well, I noticed when we were up at uh, Flexi Palooza, the gas station down the road, they sold racing fuel. Okay. Well, there's a lot of high rods and, you know. Yeah, because I mean, we were sitting there. I remember you'd always kind of, hey, you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're in the Motor City, so. Right. Yeah. But. Um, I say we got sidetracked talking about big race cars. It's supposed to be a show about slot cars. Well, how's your how's your enduro work this week? Is it uh, um, teams? Yes, it's teams. Yep. Who's your partner? My partner your is partner? every. That's just a two man, or I should say, it's a not a two man team for me. It's, George is, everyone knows George, George's cousin's daughter. Okay. Ashley, she's the one who made me the birthday cake. Okay, she's your partner? She's my partner. I told is her. This, uh, is this on the oval? No, this is on the Cobra. Okay. I told her that, you know, since she did the birthday cake and everything, if she wanted to race it, I'd be her partner. And um, um, how many hours is it? Uh, it's supposed to be six hours. How many teams do we have? Uh, that, I don't know. Okay, I, so I, are you guys doing 
like eight 45 minute heats or are they going to do I think they're going to do it like they did the, the last one you know they have a 15 minute heats i think they're going to race the eight and then take a break and then do the last eight 15 so, minutes so this will probably be about a uh, nine to ten hour race well they're starting at noon this time so they'll get done <laughs> nine or so ten. We'll probably yeah we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be going eating mexican at about <laughs> nine thirty ten o'clock and i'll think, be saying i'll never do it again if you think you had track calls last week or last race uh well, yeah, I'm going to. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to have fun. Me and my well, that's partner. All, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not even trying to think of how long it's going to take. So, yeah, two hours last week was. I don't know, a little a little low, but I mean it was. I mean after the race, I said, "Well, let's re rack and let's go again." Right. Nobody else wanted I mean, to. Go. But I mean, it was cool. We started it. We started like at one thirty, and we were done by three thirty. I mean, right now that would be perfect and be awesome, you know, if that happened. But yeah. the Alzheimer was what two hours? Two hours. Two hours, and see, this is <laughs> supposed to be six hours. Yeah, we ran fifteen minutes away. <laughs> so, so you know, I got to thank um, Dan and Dan and Dan Myers, Team Myers Precision parts or performance i don't know which is mpp um, they car owner they were the car builder owner um finance officers um <laughs> travel agents well i mean you know three or four weeks ago dan sent me a message hey what are you doing on august, august 18th i said no um, i don't know open weekend would you like come race and dirt with me and dad i was like well we, we probably really won't have a shot at winning but yeah, why not? Go have fun, hang out, and yeah. um, support Dave, the track owner. That's and what I keep telling myself about this race is I'm going to have fun. This is supposed to be fun. Right, and that's <laughs> what I did. I went and had fun and got, yeah. got to talk to a bunch of guys and right. you know, hang out, cut up, bust balls. Um, that's like I tell people. If I wasn't going to do this, I would just be sitting here prepping stuff for the uh, – Fiesta race and right. then for the you know mid south race. So I ran four heats. Um, they had never ran on the track before, other than whatever they got in practice there. They showed up that morning. Right, yeah, I've never ran a hard body car before, so they're not that bad. Um, no. But they had never ran the track. Right. So, yeah. so I just told them, I said, you know what, I'm going to run black and purple, and I'm going to run red and white, and, and gotcha. you got to run the middle lanes. And, um, yeah, they did pretty good. I mean, our car was pretty heavy, pretty slow in that aspect. I mean, the motor was good down. I mean, it was a handout motor race. Gotcha. Both side FK motors. Um, I think they had to be geared 732 or 33. Um, <clears throat> but their car was really smooth. It was just sluggish off the turns. Did you have to run like the spec tires, or was it? No, they there, there's tires that you have to run, you know, right. B and E or yeah. Cause see, I honestly don't have a clue. Yes. And I don't right. know what was I don't know what was on the car. I just yeah, I just I talked to George today because he's the car owner. He's been kind of filling me in. Right. So, they, had, work because, they had two cars. They had one with a '58. I think they said it was Ford body. And that's, I think, the car they had picked to race because it was faster. Right. But it had a lot of chatter. Gotcha. And, and then I said, well, you have another car? And they're like, we have this car. And I put it on. I'm like, man, this car is so smooth. Right. That car's got a faster motor. But if you get the chatter out of it, so we changed tires, and it made a little better, but it still had just this little chatter. And I said, don't matter because when we get the handout motor, yeah, I don't oh, think that car's faster than this car. I just think the difference is motors, right? Better. So let's just do this car with the new motor, and right. so yeah, I'm gonna try and get there Friday and get some get some laps. I think it should be exciting. Uh, it'd be fun. You, uh, got, you guys are running H and R chassis. I believe so. Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, it's the H and R chassis. I do know that much. Like I said, George is doing it all. See, we we ran the kit cars. Gotcha. So, at George's, not going to start bodies. Not going to start an argument, but I mean the kit cars depends on what motor you got in them. I mean, if you if you put if you put that MT5 motor in the kit car, you probably really wouldn't see much difference between that and an H and R car. Right. As you put more and more horsepower to the H and R car, the kit car is going to work better. So. Yeah. Like because I think they got. They, they, they right. have a. They got a height rule in the body. And yeah. I think there's do. a. There's a. The body has to weigh a certain amount. I think there's a weight rule. Okay. I do know the huts about all the rules I know. <laughs> well, and see, that's like you can run in this deal. You had to run between a 1949 and a 1962 body, right? And I mean, some are pretty long, but the hot body it was. I think it was a 1949 something, and that's what uh, the two local teams had. Gotcha. And they were still testing. Yeah, they were short and they were lighter, and then they also ran lighter chassis than the rest of us. So um, that's where their advantage came from. Was just they 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 did our homework, right? Yeah, and uh, it's one of the reasons why they, I want to get there Friday. Just they kind, to see what to I... the, they kind of took it to the next step from what has been the norm. Gotcha. Which now that'll probably become the new norm. I want to try and get there Friday to, I guess you could say, I'll, I'll start off practicing first because remember our discussion we had yes. in practicing. <laughs> I'm going to practice first, and after I practice, I'm going to start testing because there's no there's no sense in testing if I can't practice. Right. <laughs> it's like no matter if I ain't making laps, there's no sense in making it faster. Right. So. All right. So let's do these drawings before I forget. So we're giving away three packs of these new Mid America screws. Oh, Jeremy Wyant, he's a retro racer. He can use them. And uh, Ed Hoffman, there's another. Just in time yeah. for the. Yeah. Southern That's the name I know. Southern Retro Rumble. And. Hey, William Brinkley. Hey. All retro, guys. Okay, so William Brinkley, Ed Hoffman, and Jeremy Wyant. You need to contact Roger at Mid-America, Naperville, for your package of motor screws. i got to write on here what these are, so... And let Roger know. Secret word of the show. And it ain't going to be cornbread or either. Cornbread. I don't know if it's an old it. video. Yeah, I've seen it. As I said, that's an old video. Yeah, I, yeah well, well, I've seen it. I'm like, I've, I've seen this yeah. before. Yeah, like two years ago. I don't think it's been that long. Someone sent it to me, and I was just like, yeah. I think, I think Joe Liguori actually sent it to me. Yeah, it's probably, I think that's who sent it to me in a private message. Yeah. I, I've seen that, and I was like, huh. I've said that plenty of times about certain situations with racing. Okay, so what is that secret word? Secret word. Just say free hot dogs. <laughs> free hot dogs? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's the secret words of the show. Free secret words. Hot no, we'll just say hot dog. dog. We'll just say hot dogs. Hot dogs? Hot dog? Hot dogs, because I'm going to definitely eat more than one if they're free. Get you a weenie and put it in some cornbread. You'd be cornbreading. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm trying to think how the video even went now. I have to look it up. I know a boy was pissed off. <laughs> well, I think uh, somebody dive-bombed him. 
or right. must have run him out or, you know, whatever. And he wasn't too happy. And But he says when you race back there, that's where they're at. Yeah. The cornbreaders. All right. <clears throat> so, the secret word is hot dogs. Yeah. I don't have any ever. I don't ever. I'm like you. I don't ever think of it. Free and you're like, hey, and it's just like, yeah. Okay. My secret words aren't as cool as Ralph's, but I'm feeling in for him. No, you're all right. Yeah, hey, sometimes I draw the blank, too. Yeah, I just, about, what's the secret word of the show? Well, I, I try to make it relate to what we've talked about, and it's just like well, we've right. talked about all kinds of things, you know? I think about the secret word until... Yeah, it's and then it's cool. like, you know, I was going to say, you know, Nazareth, but I was like, I think they have already, I think they have already said that. Right. You know. So. All right, Shane. Thanks. For, no problem. For being here. I would say thanks for having me, but it's starting to become a norm. Yeah, I'll probably see you next week. Hey. Okay. If, if we do it next week, we have to do like we talked before. Who knows? Thursday, Thursday night, 10 o'clock. <laughs> The rated R version. Between the, yeah. You can count the F bombs and S bombs. Yeah, X rated version. Yeah, I have to wait until 10 when all the kiddos are asleep. So, anyway, so, um, oh, and, and are you friends with Butters on uh, Facebook? I, I was. Okay. How about Butters RC page? Uh, he, yeah. Yeah, I have no clue. Well, well, he, just see, came, he just came back from the Roar RC Nationals. Right. Yeah, I've seen a post. He wrote an interesting piece. As uh, I say, you think of the slot you think the slot car have problems with the slot car gnats. Right. <laughs> Take a game with that. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of choice words. Yeah, a few. I just so, all right. I catch myself going to like monthly races that aren't as serious. Sometimes I get a little intense. I hear you. But I mean, it's it's racing. You know, if you're not passionate about what you do, then why do it? You know, it's just sometimes I got to be reminded. And luckily, I have someone like Bobby in my corner that says, you know, hey, you're kind of going there. Right. Either that or I have George over there. He's normally over in the corner, beat red, trying not to laugh at me because he just sees it coming. So. All right. Well, until next week, enjoy episode 54. We'll be back next week for episode 55. Be safe. Good luck at the race this weekend there, hard body right. specialist. Yeah. Another one on there'll your be, girl. There'll be another one to check off the list. That's right. I'm sure it'll be live because I know Randy normally goes live. Oh, yeah. So if you want to get a good laugh, Saturday afternoon. Saturday. And, and they are they are streamlining the Nazarenats too. Mm -hmm. So yep. lots of race oh. action to watch online this week. Oh yeah. All right, we're out. All right.